The practice has been here a little over 21 years. And during the week, Dr. James Campbell says Denver West Pediatrics would be busy. It sure would, yeah. <laughs> but he's on call this weekend and taking lots of them too. The most common call we're getting this weekend is from parents who are calling, usually parents of an infant or a toddler, and they're reporting that their child has a runny nose, congestion, coughing. Symptoms, he says, that make parents wonder if their child has RSV. And it's not just him taking notice of what he calls an unusual outbreak. No one would typically see RSV cases at the end of summer, which we did, or this much in the fall, which we are. Many of these kids have not had RSV for one or two or three years because of the pandemic. So they're probably just not as well defended against it. Since the start of October, the state health department says there have been 292 RSV related hospitalizations in the Denver Metro. Right now, 95% of hospitalizations are among children. We don't have a patient count from Children's Hospital Colorado, but an infectious disease doctor said, like so many other pediatric hospitals, RSV and flu cases there are both on the rise. Uh, there's a few viruses out there. For now, there's Campbell there's says COVID. awareness is key. RSV is, it's an old school outbreak. It happens every year. This year, it's unusual just because it's earlier and it's sort of a bigger outbreak than usual. But it is an illness that in the vast majority of babies and toddlers is not going to be life-threatening. I'm Luis De Leon for Nine News. By now, you know the drill. Wash your hands. Stay home if you're sick. And Dr. Campbell says it is time to get medical care if your child begins struggling to breathe. There currently isn't a vaccine preventing RSV infections, but scientists are working on developing one. In the 60s, scientists tried developing an RSV vaccine for kids, but that was not successful. So now researchers are trying to develop a new vaccine, but the protein the virus uses to infect human cells, it's tricky. It's rapidly changing, it or rapidly so changes its structure, making it difficult to develop a vaccine that can target it. So two vaccines from Pfizer and GlaxoSmithKline are both showing some promise in older adults who are also at high risk of severe illness. Pfizer plans to expand their vaccine trial to younger kids, but it could take years. There is a medicine that can help protect some babies at high risk for severe illness, but it's mostly used for premature babies and young kids with certain heart and lung conditions.